You were a cut above the rest in the previous war game, the cream of the crop. Other Exo fighters should admire your achievements. Hey guys, this is Project Dave playing some Exo Primal. This is the uh, Splatoon Trophy Pop. It's on volcanic base, which, uh, if you don't know Exo Primal, there's a map in the game that you can't access until after you've beaten the final boss. 5% of people have beaten the final boss, most of them quit, so they didn't keep playing. So the people that did keep playing, there's a super minuscule, tiny chance of that map appearing. I've gotten it three times in 320 matches, so super lucky there, I guess, uh, to have a lineup like that. That's justifying the video. Here's uh, some stuff. I guess I already went over the character levels, but I was expecting it to pop when Barrage was like 95, but I actually got to 100. Um, 320 is slightly over average of 300. I have high end with every every class, as you can see here, which means I get 100k points. The Gauntlet ones aren't in the game yet, so other awards. <laughs> and the awards I don't have are the Blitzkrieg medal, which is the rarest medal by a lot. Um, that one's just because I don't play the character, and Neural Overload, which... I feel like I should have done those. I've got set, so kind of close. <laughs> With Green, you really have to try to get, and you only get like one a match if you dedicate yourself to trying to get one. <laughs> so it's not really worth the effort because you have to sacrifice a really good buff to even be able to paralyze large monsters. So, not great. <laughs> but uh, here's the the. I didn't know the trophy was gonna pop here, but. He's this is the first time he has ever set this line of dialogue, so I didn't know the name of the level. It's called the Volcanic Base. I just called it the Volcano Helipad before, because it's a helipad and a volcano. But turns out the name is Volcanic Base. And there you go, Barrage 100. I think Vigilant's at 44. I did use Vigilant a couple times today for... Uh, Basically, you switch to Vigilant when it's a Pyroneurosaur spawns or any big flying wave, and then you go back to Barrage. And that's optimal play. Uh, unless you have to play attacks, then you play Krieger almost always. Um, I think the, the first two people that got the Platinum were using some kind of exploit to force an AIQ or something like that, so it went a little bit faster for them. But they still had to sit there and play for 70 hours in like a four day period. So that was their life for those four days. I took uh, this is a week, uh, nine days, nine days. And I worked all week, so nine days plus worked all week. So work slash Oxo Primal, that was my life. Um, general evaluations of the game. So this is kind of a. It's a little strange that I'm on this map because usually I'd be on like a uh, level one map. That's like the best frost grenade ever, by the way, right there. How does it do? Got like 50, 50 uh, regular raptors with that. Um, so basically, the issue with the game is it's on Game Pass, first to start it. First and foremost, the matchmaking doesn't work. <laughs> Number two. Uh, unless you're the one progressing the story, then I guess the matchmaking works 20% uh, of the time or something. But, uh, so those two work together, and so you could have nine people who are level 10,000 in a queue, and then one person who's level one, and the level one makes it a level one game, so you gotta go to place the same old uh, downtown map with 70 raptors and two pteranons and so on with five monster types and whatever that you've played 400 uh, times before the instead of playing on this map which you have a less than one percent chance of playing on uh it's possible if savage gauntlet was in the game already then everybody was high level would just play that and they'd queue together and that would be fine but there's no announcement as to when that's coming or anything and I suspect everyone will have quit by then, or the vast majority of people will have quit by then. There'll still be level 1 game pass people playing, of course. But we're like playing it as a demo, so they play for two hours and then stop. 
But because those people are queuing and they can queue into you, you're stuck. Uh, you're stuck in purgatory of playing the same three maps over and over and the same two or three end games when there are 30, 30 plus end games in the game, maybe 40. So you could be doing, you could play 40 matches and not have one of them repeat. But instead you get, you play 40 matches and 35 of them repeat. And of those 35, three of them, as those 35 consist of just three. Uh, there's a way to express that mathematically that, that doesn't come to mind presently, but you get the idea. So that's that's the core problem with the game. I think the game is like a 7 out of 10 because of that. This isn't exactly a review. If, if the matchmaking worked, I think this would be like an 8.5-ish game. If you could just queue raids, that, that's all they had to do, add, add a raid queue. Like all the other matchmaking sucks, whatever. Just add a raid queue. Then it would probably be an 8 out of 10. So solid one point improvement in the, t the 10 point scale. Just add a raid queue. Uh, because the raids are a lot more fun than the rest of the game, except for the Magnum raid, which is mediocre, but the rest of them are all very good. It's mediocre and it takes five minutes too long because they have to listen to the talking and wait for the escort. Um, I do like this game and I'll keep playing. I'm probably going to see how many cues it takes to get a raid, just apropos of nothing. Um, to level up the remaining characters. So that should be mildly interesting, but enjoy the rest of this match. It was a pretty close match. We got, uh, I dropped the Dominator on accident and then the other guy probably did better with the Dominator than I would have. I still got the MVP, but uh, worked out basically. Obviously everybody that's in a Volcanic Cubs game is like a god, basically. <laughs> They're like the, in the slew of Game Pass level ones everywhere. There's this tiny handful of people that can even queue into this, so everybody in this game is going to be a really good player, of course. Um, but it worked out. Uh, we were behind the whole game. It's possible the other team has a pre-made, because I think it's hard to queue into this if you don't have a pre-made on one or the other side. I shouldn't have done this. This killed, uh, killed two of my team. Um, because that jump is difficult and if you screw it up, you die. So <laughs> I should have just walked around. It's possible they would have jumped off anyways. It's not necessarily my fault that they jumped off, but no need to do the thing that looks stylish uh, when you didn't have to. There's an interesting use of your burning heart because the Stegosaurus is in a very dangerous position and we definitely weren't in, in shape to kill it quickly. So. That was why I did the, it doesn't give me any points. Um, the way to get points with Barrage is set an enemy on fire, a large or medium enemy, and then do Burning Heart. And then if there's a Trigger Neosaur, it's like 40,000 or 50,000 points just off of that one ultimate. Um, Barrage is the best character in the game. Vigilant and Krieger are also S tier. And Skywave with like a really aggro team is probably pretty good, but otherwise the other two healers are better. Um, what else? Soldier 76 is the most boring. Zephyr is actually fun to play. Zephyr is not, not very good. Zephyr is only good if it's a training dummy and can't attack you, so basically Neo T-Rex, so that's all. Um, but if if you had like a pocket healer and never died with Zephyr, then they could do comparable DPS to uh, to Vigilant and Barrage. Vigilant does not do Barrage's damage, but Vigilant hits harder to hit targets and freezes a different status effect than Fire. Fire is the best status effect, but it's useful to have alternate status effects. That's a reason why Witch Doctor would generally be better than Nimbus. Nimbus, I think, is better for raids, though, because of the, the Hollow Revive. But generally speaking, you should be playing Krieger and Barrage and Vigilance. If you don't, if you try to go for 100k kills 
and you're not playing Barrage, it's probably going to take 40% longer or possibly even longer than that. Oh, if you're doing the AI exploit, whatever that is, I don't know what it is. <laughs> but presumably there's some way to manipulate queues. It's probably easier to do on PC. So that it forces it to just be you and some AIs. If you were doing that, then Mirasame becomes probably the best taken at kills. But generally speaking, there's too much volatility with Mirasame. So even though sometimes he'll get the most kills, most of the time it's going to be you're just set, sitting there holding the parry button and nothing is happening. <laughs> um, except for the high roll games, I guess. But there you go. Even this uh, end game, Vortex for Sabotage, I've only seen this like 20 times. So less than 10% of the time. Maybe less than that. It's probably like 15 times. So this is like a 5% Q. This is the first PvE match. I've, all three Qs were on PvE. Because you get more kills in PvE, so faster to get to the platinum. But the other two times I've queued this, it was PvP end game, even though I queued PvE. Uh, this is the first PvE queue I've seen on this match. On this map. As far as the, the end game. So, there you go. Thanks very much for watching. Hope you enjoy the rest of this. It's a tight ending. Uh, I guess we did win by a lot because he had a, our buddy here, Tetsuya. He had a good dominator, so. And this is, um, for this map and Space Elevator, the end game in PvE can really go anyway. For all the other maps, uh, usually the team that, uh, if you're 20 seconds ahead, your team will always win, basically, as long as you don't wipe. If you're less than 20 seconds ahead, the other team has the advantage because they get the Dominator first. And their Dominator is better. Uh, the Dominator should not exist in PvE, obviously. I don't, that's just not an uncommon opinion. Uh, if it's a PvE queue, there's no need for Dominators. Uh, in PvP, it's okay. It's, it's high variance. But I think everything is high variance post uh, Overwatch design of ultimates and stuff. So one ultimate between a game and PvP. The PvP in this game is fine, but that said, I'm probably never going to queue it again. Except oh, well, I'll queue it when the next battle pass starts, assuming I get it from Gekka. Uh, so that's in three months. So I'll play PvP then and. If it's on Game Pass, then the queues will probably still be banned. <laughs> but if it's not a Game Pass, then maybe there'll be like 300 people playing and every queue, the queues are like two minutes long or whatever instead of 10 seconds. But every match is fine. Uh, and maybe at that point the game's an 8 of 8.5 out of 10, so we'll say that. We shall see. <laughs> but thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Summoning Dynamic. Summoning Scout Shields. Summoning Cryo Resorts. Summoning Dynamic Resorts.
burning up. Behold, the best Exo fighters in this war game. Quick thinking. Summoning Raptors. Summoning a T-Rex. Summoning Dynamics. Summoning Skeletor. 